Well, y'all, today we're going to be rendering some lard, and I'm going to show you two ways that you can do this. This right here is pork leaf fat, L-E-A-F, like a leaf. So this is the fat that's around the organs and the kidneys. Um, this is one of the best uh, fats on the hog to use for lard, but you can also use uh, what I call the hard fat on some of the other pieces too, like um, it would be around the hams and things like that. You can also use that to make lard. So the first method that we're going to start with is the stovetop method. You can do this over a propane burner. The old timers used to do it over a fire. So if you've got a big cauldron and you want to do it over a fire, you can do it that way too. But you're going to have to watch it. So what I'll do, pull me out a piece. I'm going to sit this out of the way so y'all can see. I've got my pot here. I don't have any heat on it yet. But we're just going to cut this into pieces. Um, about like that. Nothing, nothing huge. You don't, the bigger the pieces are, the longer it's going to take it to cook down. But I'm not going to sit here and cut it into little tiny cubes either. So, um, make sure you have a knife sharpener on hand because nothing dulls a knife quite like that. Believe it or not. I don't know what fat does to it, but it will dull a knife quick, fast, and in a hurry. The leaf fat that you saw in my box, that is one pig worth of fat. And some of it has that layer on it. There's like a, a film, and you can pull that off if you can get it off. If you can't, don't, don't fret over it. This is a very simple process, very forgiving. The biggest thing is you just have to watch it to make sure it don't burn. Jelly jar full of water in the 
bottom just so it don't stick. So lard in the crock pot, you can't make as much, but you don't have to watch it as much. So I'll stir this about every hour. Lard on the stove, I'll stir it about every five to 10 minutes. Um, and I'll show you what the cracklings look like when we get a little farther in the process. All right, this is on my next stir, about 10, 15 minutes later. You can see it bubbling there. One way you know your lard is pretty much done is when this bubbling really slows down. You're gonna have, these pieces are gonna be brown and crunchy. All right, y'all, my cracklings have quit bubbling. The crock pot's still going strong, so it's still gonna be a while for that. But my stove top is done. Now you're gonna notice your lard may be a little amber color. That's from the cracklings, and as it dries, it will get whiter and whiter. Key to good lard is good filtration. I have a paper towel on top of a strainer going through a funnel. So that way that catches any little microscopic pieces of the cracklings, anything like that, because the, the cleaner your lard is, the longer it's gonna keep. That's how, just the other day, I was using lard from 2020. We gotta have excellent filtration. Now, lard does not have to be canned. Lard is shelf stable, but the heat from the grease, because you gotta remember, be careful with this stuff, because you're working with hot grease. Um, but the grease is so hot that it causes uh, the lid to seal most of the time. Sometimes it don't, but most of the time it does. So I want you to do your research on lard and why you should use lard. Um, you know, this is a natural occurring fat. This is something that's in nature, not made in a factory, nothing added to it, nothing done to it. You know, it's just cooked down fat. That's all it is. So why should this not be the fat that we're using? Um, because wouldn't you think that our body would be able to process animal fats way better than synthetic fats? I think so. I, um, use lard daily several times a day a lot of times any of my cooking anytime it calls for oil or um i need grease in the pan anything that's where i put the lard i even make chocolate chip cookies with the lard y'all and they are so good but any bacon anything that i do anything that calls for oil box cakes it all gets lard is also full of a lot of different vitamins that our body needs. Us as mammals, we need those vitamins because we are not herbivores. Neither are we carnivores. We are, of course, omnivores, but our bodies are programmed to need this kind of fat. This is the kind of fat that you can't get from vegetables or vegetable oil, as a matter of fact. <laughs> So now what I'll do is I'm gonna dump those cracklings back in there. Now you could also use cheesecloth for, cloth for this, but I can never remember to buy any. So paper towel it is. If you're wondering what I've got going in the pot over here beside of me, that is my sauce meat. Um, so be on the lookout for that video too. Now something you will notice, this versus what I've got in the crock pot once I strain that, this in the crock pot is much cleaner. And I think it's because the cracklings that don't cook down as much as it does like the stove top method. Um, but it's almost so clear that it looks like water when I'm putting it in the jars. Don't throw those cracklings away either, y'all. I'll link a video to my crackling cornbread. You can't beat it. I love crackling cornbread, and I'm going to make some since I have some fresh cracklings.
Let's check on our lard. It's been cooking now a couple of hours. You can see it's cooking down, just not nearly as fast as it was in the pot. Alright, this lard is cooked for about 10 hours in the crock pot. And you can see there how much it has cooked down. Um, it still bubbles some in the crock pot, even after it's done, in my opinion. Um, it's just a little different than cooking it on the stove. <music> of lard today one quart from my crock pot batch and two quarts from my stove top so making lard is very simple uh, don't get too caught up in the details you can do this you can make your own cooking fat so anyways thank you so much for watching today i hope you learned a little something if you hadn't already please consider subscribing to the channel and anyways we'll see you on the next one